So good afternoon, I'm Jeremiah, I'm very glad to be here, and I'm actually not in the printed program. I'm stepping in for Giampaolo Gazzarelli, who unfortunately could not be here. Um, so the title of my talk uh, is uh, Agent-Based Modeling, Artificial Intelligence, and Austrian Economics. And immediately the title might send some warning signals, uh, because some people have the opinion that any kind of modeling uh, is not compatible with Austrian economics. But I hope to suggest uh, that there are different kinds of modeling and perhaps some kinds would be helpful, even beneficial for Austrian economics. So in this talk, I'll give a, uh, an introduction to agent-based modeling, uh, assuming absolutely no background. I'll say some things about artificial intelligence and then at the end, I'll share a little bit about our project which is basically um, uh, called the Austrian economics model, which is an agent-based model uh, that uses artificial intelligence. So in a nutshell, agent-based modeling is all about simulating independent agents interacting with other agents and or the environment. So agents can be anything at all. They can be atoms, molecules, plants, animals in the natural sciences. But of course, we're primarily concerned with agents as individual human beings. And the most famous um, agent-based model, and one which you'll encounter in practically every introduction to agent-based modeling, is this one by uh, Thomas Schelling called the segregation model. Um, and he wanted, with this model, to explore the segregation of neighborhoods in the US. This model was created in the 1970s and the civil rights movement uh, was in full swing and they fought down to break many uh, racial divisions, but nevertheless, segregated neighborhoods still remain. So Schelling wanted to uh, investigate and he asked, is there any rule of behavior such that if all agents followed this one rule, uh, it would be enough and it would be sufficient to cause segregated neighborhoods. So this is the paraphrase of the rule that he came up with. If at least X number of my neighbors are the same color as myself, I will be satisfied and stay in place. Otherwise, I will move to a different location. So it's a preference for similar neighbors. It's not a negative discrimination of differently colored neighbors. It's just wanting to be with those of the same color. This is the agent-based model in a net logo, which is the most popular software for agent-based modeling right now. And I wanted actually to run the, uh, the program, but uh, I, I can't for security reasons. Um, so here are screenshots. So let's say that the agents, which are divided here into two different colors, uh, red and green, have a desire for 30% similarity uh, among their neighbors. And you see that value encircled in red at the left. So if 30% of an agent's uh, neighbors are of the same color, uh, the agent will be satisfied and stay in place. Otherwise, uh, the agent will move to a different location. So if we let that run a couple of steps, at the end of it, when all the agents are satisfied, we notice clumping and segregation okay? here and there. What if we raise the value to something much higher, 65%? Okay? So we let that run. And here you see, uh, at the end of it, a stronger and more prominent uh, segregation. So with this model, Schelling showed that one rule is enough and would suffice to cause segregated neighborhoods, even without a negative rule that discriminates against differently colored agents. And so this was a model that was quite controversial and generated a lot of research. Another famous um, agent-based model, and one that is slightly more complex, is the El Farol Bar model. Uh, the El Farol Bar is a real bar in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, and that's where the uh, Santa Fe Institute is based, famous for complexity research. And one of the scientists there, uh, Brian Arthur, loved going to the El Farol Bar, but he noticed that when it gets overcrowded, he doesn't enjoy it anymore. 
And he thought to himself, maybe, okay, the other patrons feel the same. They want to have a good time at the Alpha Roll Bar, uh, but when it's overcrowded, unfortunately, no one has a good time. So he made an agent-based model for this. And in this model, we have 100 agents, the white uh, uh, agents there, who want to go to the Alpha Roll Bar represented by the blue square. They all want to have a good time, but we also have this overcrowding threshold, encircled in red, of 60 agents. So if there are more than 60 agents in the bar, no one has a good time. So each agent here wants to go to the bar, but they have to predict whether or not it's going to be overcrowded in that coming night. And to do this, they have each a unique bag of strategies, 10 strategies, which are basically just equations, and also a memory of the uh, attendance at the previous, of the previous nights at the bar. And let's just say it's announced online so they would know. And each turn, they use a strategy from their bag of strategies and use their memory for the previous nights to decide whether to go to the bar or not. And so we let that run. Okay. Agents go to the bar. Sometimes those who go get it wrong and it's actually crowded. And after uh, several turns, we see this fluctuating cycle of attendance, which hovers just around the threshold. And this is an interesting result, because all the agents here are using unique and different strategies, and there's no active coordination between them. Okay? But we don't see all the agents going all at once. We don't see no, none of them going. We see this regular fluctuating uh, pattern. So this is also a model that provoked a lot of research. Now from these two examples, we can glean a couple of features of agent-based modeling. Independent behavior, each agent has its own state and actions. Heterogeneity, agents can be different from each other. And the keyword from complexity research called emergence, where the micro behaviors of agents can result in large macro patterns that cannot be predicted from the micro behaviors alone. In economics, the interest in agent-based modeling really picked up steam after the 2008 financial crisis. And we even have this uh, nice quote from the then uh, president of the ECB. Uh, I quote, as a policymaker during the crisis, I found the available models of limited help. In fact, I would go further. In the face of the crisis, we felt abandoned by conventional tools. We need to deal better with heterogeneity across agents and the interaction among the Though the, those heterogeneous agents. We need to entertain alternative motivations for economic choices. Agent-based modeling dispenses with the optimization assumption and allows for more complex interactions between agents. Such approaches are worthy of our attention. And let me also add that uh, we have a good number of Austrian economists who basically say the same thing and who encourage agent-based modeling for Austrian economics. But as I will mention shortly, um, we only have two concrete attempts so far. So let's go to artificial intelligence. So there are AI options available for agent-based modeling, and they're usually called cognitive architectures. Um, but in my research, I've chosen um, one of these specific um, AIs called uh, Belief Desire Intention Framework with Goal-Oriented Action Planning. So I know that's a long phrase, but it's actually pretty straightforward. Agents here have beliefs, goals and desires, and actions and plans. Okay. And uh, it has just these three main parts. And so it's simple compared to other um, cognitive architectures which have lots of components. But at the same time, uh, this artificial intelligence is sophisticated because uh, it frees the programmer from determining how uh, an agent chooses its actions, okay? which is commonly the case for another kind of AI called finite state machines. Okay? With this uh, GOP AI, you give the, the agent its goals, you give its set of possible actions, and the AI uh, is responsible for connecting all those actions to arrive at the goal. So this will be clear with an example. 
So here uh, we have an agent uh, with a main goal, and that is to collect as much, oh, what happened there? Has it been stuck for quite a while? <laughs> oh my goodness, I didn't catch that. Okay, let's see what's... Oh, it's too bad. Okay, we're having some technical problems here. Let's see if I can try it again. One last try. Mm. All right, so at least we have a picture. I don't know if it's gonna move. Okay, it moves. Um, so in this uh, uh, simulation, we have an agent with a main goal, and that is to collect as much wood as possible and put it in that blue box there. Uh, and um, in order to do that, it needs to chop down trees. When it chops down trees, uh, wood and apples fall to the ground, okay? And the agent can collect the wood. It can also take the apples and eat it because it's losing health, which is in that uh, bar, red bar at the upper left. And it can also take an apple and plant it because, uh, to grow a new tree because, of course, you can't just keep on chopping trees. It won't be sustainable in the long run. So the, uh, the AI is what... Um, is what uh, chooses and sequences uh, the actions in order to fulfill the goal. And you see those actions at the bottom left there, pick up, pick up fruit, grow tree, pick up fruit, eat fruit, and so on. And it, it manages to uh, accomplish its goal and collect uh, a lot of wood, as you see in the score uh, in the upper right. In Austrian economics, of course, we also talk about this, the uh, subjective goals and actions uh, of human beings that are oriented towards satisfying these goals. So I think that this um, artificial intelligence is promising for that. So the question of an Austrian economics model. Okay. Well, we're not the first to try. Um, in the 1990s, uh, Don Lavoyer and the Agorix project at George Mason University tried to create a simulation for the evolution of money based on Karl Menger. But as one contributor recounts, I quote, neither our agents nor the environments in which they interacted ever developed very far, and money certainly never emerged, end quote. So I don't know the exact details of why this first attempt failed, and I think one possibility is that the technology was just not there yet. We have a second, more recent attempt by Hendrik Hagedorn, and he has a model that, I quote, synthesizes elements of post-Keynesian economics and complexity economics with the central tenets of Austrian economics, end quote. And it's a very mathematical agent-based model, and it's quite an accomplishment. You can check out his website. Um, but the, agent, the agents in Hagedorn's model are households, firms, and banks, whereas what we would like to do is model individual human beings. Because we want to use ABM uh, to uh, support the methodological individualism of Austrian economics, we want artificial intelligence to capture the subjective values uh, uh, and purposeful human action. And we want the combination of both to capture the economy as a complex process. And the goal here is not um, prediction, but education. So it's one thing to explain Austrian economics verbally, right? Or even through creative videos, but it might also be effective if people can see the principles of Austrian economics unfold in real time through a simulation. In fact, some people have even suggested turn it into a game, okay? Uh, that will make it even more accessible, but we'll have to see about that. So we just started this project a few months ago, and this is how the, pro the prototype currently looks. Uh, it's going to look much better after a while. And because it's in such an early stage, um, the project targets are still quite modest. So all we want to do at this point uh, is to simulate heterogeneous agents collecting natural goods, 
agents combining those natural goods to create other goods, and agents buying and selling goods uh, with each other. And as simple as that sounds, um, that's actually not so simple from a technical point of view, especially if you want to make it look realistic or believable. And at any point um, in the simulation, you can check uh, what's going on in any agent, what its beliefs are, what its goals are, and the actions that it has decided to take to achieve those goals. Uh, and perhaps one of the first Austrian uh, concepts that will be immediately shown is marginal utility because as agents fulfill one goal, uh, then the succeeding fulfillment of the same goal gets less priority and it can focus on other more urgent goals. So we have this website, uh, austrianeconomicsmodel.com, uh, which I hope you can uh, visit. And uh, if you have any tips, suggestions, recommendations, feedback, uh, please do approach me after the talk. Thank you very much. Um, since this is a paper related to artificial intelligence, one maybe speculative question. Um, kind of uh, in the fundamentals of the libertarian thought, there's this Hayekian idea on the problem of the knowledge in society, of information in society, mm -hmm. of setting prices in society. In a sense, nobody can have all the information yeah. and it has to do it, it has to be done uh, kind of spontaneously by many. Is the end game of artificial intelligence or of, um, let's say, research like you're doing and some others who are creating better and better and better models of what is going on, leading to a scenario when there will be a supercomputer or some um, super intelligence that will be able to solve that problem of knowledge in a society and have, in fact, more knowledge than is there within the um, players on the market. I think that's definitely the goal of some people uh, doing artificial intelligence, but I think uh, the goal for this project at least is to be more supportive uh, of, uh, I guess, uh, propagating the ideas of the Austrian school. So uh, we're going to be using artificial intelligence to actually simulate the knowledge problem uh, uh, of Hayek, because in the simulation, you will see that other agents have uh, knowledge that other agents don't have. And you can see knowledge being passed uh, from agent to agent uh, uh, in the course of uh, the simulation. And the, perhaps the agents in the future will also use artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The system complex, complex. Okay, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, you can really go as complex as you want with AI, uh, but uh, I think I want to keep it first simple uh, at first. Uh, thank you for a very interesting uh, presentation. Now, another part of uh, you know, human action is irrational, irrationality and irrational motives. And I would uh, just, uh, on the top of my mind, I would think it would be very hard to sim uh, simulate in, in a model. Uh, and, well, we, we even know... Uh, if you look at uh, John the Baptist, he pointed out that even though we know what is good for us, even though we know our own interests, we will act against them. And perhaps even Aristotle pointed, out, mm -hmm. pointed this out, depending on your reading. So how would uh, we get towards incorporating irrationality into uh, these models? Mm -hmm. Is it even possible? Sure. Uh, it, it's definitely quite a challenge. I think it's also the question about how do you simulate emotions? Because usually uh, irrationality also can spring up from your emotions and your affections and inclinations uh, going one way and your rationality going the other way. Um, there have been attempts uh, to incorporate and simulate uh, emotions also in agent-based modeling. I think it's just about uh, trying to find the right framework for that. You probably will never be able to simulate the actual complexity of human emotions, but maybe you can reach a point that's a little bit believable. Yes. Hmm. Okay, and that's an interesting, yeah, prospect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay thank you.